Hey everybody, this is the extremely quick guide on how to filter audio in OBS Studio. This guide assumes you know how to set up a scene and a source. If not, quick refresher, click the plus sign, create a scene by clicking OK. A scene is simply what you're going to see and hear. I'm not going to do that, otherwise you'll stop seeing and hearing me. In your scene, you're going to want some sources. You'll probably have nothing when you first set up OBS Studio. Click the plus sign and add in your source. A source is, well, exactly what it sounds like. It's a source of media. In this case, audio. So click on Audio Input Capture, and you'll get this screen, Create New or Add Existing. I'm going to add existing simply because if I add new, you'll stop hearing me. So once you click Create New, you're going to get a screen that looks something like this. Simply select your device. In my case, it is the blue microphone analog stereo or the blue Yeti. From there, you're going to notice your audio quality is, well, probably crap. So you're going to want to right click on it, go to filters, and you'll see none of this. I'm disabling it. This is what the microphone sounds like. Raw, unedited microphone. If you see down in the audio mixer, this is your best buddy when you're troubleshooting your audio issues. It's picking up a lot of background noise. It's hearing the fan, it's hearing an airplane, maybe a dog barking, things like that. You're gonna to need to add some audio filters. And we're not gonna deep dive into each one of these. We're just going to pop these on and show you what they do, but we are gonna explain them a little bit. To add them, click this plus sign and then select the filter. First one is noise suppression. You probably immediately noticed a massive increase in sound quality just from noise suppression because my office has a lot of background noise. Clicking on noise suppression, you'll get two methods. I put mine to RN noise, which is higher quality. If you have a laptop or a slower computer, use the SPX. I don't know how to pronounce that. Next up is noise gate. Again, plus sign is your friend, plus sign noise gate. I'm going to turn it on. Noise gate takes a little bit of explaining, and I wish these two were reversed, but think of it like a doorway. The door is closed. The door is open. You ever hear the term you have an open mic? That's really what we're talking about. If the mic is open, it is recording. If it is closed, it is not. So we have our open threshold at negative 34 dB. You can see the audio mixer down here. We are now closing at negative 40. What this really means is when I start talking, as soon as it hits negative 34, boom, shoots up it will start recording and it's gonna limit out a lot of that background noise. As soon as I stop talking, it's going to close or turn off the mic. So again, you're not gonna hear a lot of background noise. Literally, as I'm recording this audio, I can hear a neighbor's dog barking and another neighbor's driving by with a noisy stereo, but I'm rest assured that the microphone is not picking up any of that. Next up is the compressor. Again, plus signs your friend. The compressor, well, this takes a little bit of playing around with it. It's really not super helpful if you try to dive in and understand every single setting. The thing that's helped me the most is ratio. If you are noticing your quality is not that great, play around with the ratio. And if you're too quiet or too loud, you can adjust the gain. For example, if I were to slide this over here, it's extremely loud. I'm going to put mine right back at zero because my microphone has a physical dial. Next up is limiter. Limiter is really useful if you've got uh, multiple people that are say like raising their voice and arguing and things like that. Really what the limiter does is keeping that from spiking too much and just kind of smooths out the audio quality. There's other videos out there that explain it way better than I am, but I'm trying to keep this video extremely short because I know your time's limited. Last up is invert polarity. In case you're wondering what invert polarity is, it's right out of the manual. Used to correct phase cancellation issues, but it's not super helpful. What is phase cancellation? I put this in as an honorable mention in case you're just getting really weird events in your audio. Enabling it, you may not even notice a difference in your audio. So what is a phase cancellation event? Basically, it's two sound waves that are competing, but they cancel each other out. Have you ever been in like a loud club and you get multiple guitars going at the same time? 
and then you really don't hear it or it hears really distorted for a brief second. That's basically what we're talking about. Phase cancellation is an audio phenomenon where the waves of multiple tracks work against each other to eliminate certain frequencies. You can get the same effect by hitting two tuning forks at the same time and you don't hear what you're supposed to hear. You may actually even cancel it out. You also get the term like white noise and things like that. Again, we're not going to dive too much into the science. I hope you like this video. If you are an audio expert, I'm just a normal person, drop a hint below on what you would recommend. And if you found this video helpful, give me a big thumbs up.